Alrighty, everyone. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. I think we just hit 9 a.m. on the West Coast over here, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Track was nice enough to have us on for this webinar today. Uh, I'm here with Matt and Jenna from the Track team, and then also Richie from the Price Labs team, and we'll be talking about how to use automation to scale your business, both on the pricing side and then on the PMS side. Um, so as a quick overview, uh, we'll quickly be covering some of the recent booking trends we've been seeing in the market, how things are changing with COVID, uh, the importance of dynamic pricing and really having a nimble rate strategy during recovery, uh, and then talking about how general automation of rates can really help your business out here. Uh, and then the track team will take it away talking about uh, how they ensure price parity between all of your channels and then how they can also fully automate that communication process with all of your guests before we move into a quick Q&A here. So lots of content, should be a fun hour. So if you do have questions, please do type those into that Q&A section that you probably see at the bottom of your screen here. I uh, try to keep things out of the chat. That just helps us monitor things a little more effectively so we can answer all of your questions as we kind of dive in here. Perfect, so jumping right into content. We'll go through this pretty quickly here, um, but I wanted to highlight some of the major shifts that we've been seeing in booking trends over the past few years, and then talk a little bit about how COVID has affected those shifts as well. They've definitely been accelerated with all of these crazy trends we've been seeing with bookings recently. So. The first major trend, and this is something that's been going on for a few years now, is that we've been seeing a gradual shift towards shorter booking windows. So this isn't something purely COVID related. This has been happening year over year for quite some time now. We think it's largely due to the fact that so much of the inventory these days is um, available online versus you know call-in bookings that people were used to years ago which brings in both a different market segment and changes a little bit how those existing guests are booking so in this graph here what we're essentially looking at are bookings made for july and how those trends change in previous months here so what we can see we have 2018 2019 and 2020 graph here and every year we generally see a spike in bookings for July, right around January. So right after the holidays, people start planning their vacation season. Uh, and if you look at this gray line for 2018, you can see that historically, we would expect bookings to really pick up four months in advance, right around April. But with this 2019 graph, you can see that those trends were pushed out by about a month. So bookings didn't really start picking up until May. And then we saw a lot more last minute bookings creeping in here. So why this is important is let's say it's 2019, it's April, you're working off of your historic booking data to generate your pacing reports. And you notice, hey, we're way behind on bookings for July from where we were last year. Initial reaction might be to drop rates. Uh, we just wanna make sure you're aware that, hey, if you drop rates, keep looking at that market data since these trends in when people are making their bookings are shifting year over year. So if you were to drop rates and keep them low, you'd definitely be leaving money on the table since that demand has purely shifted over. It's still there, it's just coming in later. So how that relates to COVID here, uh, we essentially saw a more dramatic version of this situation where all bookings for the summer nearly dried up in March and April here for the most part with all the uncertainty that was going on. So a lot of property managers who are dropping their rates to pretty much their minimum rate here later left a lot of money on the table if they didn't adjust their rates when bookings started picking up pretty drastically here. So I know in a lot of those vacation destinations, July ended up being a pretty strong month. People were able to charge pretty exceptional rates so if you were to leave your prices low, just make sure that you're nimble and reacting to both your internal occupancies as those increase in rates, and then also that market occupancy as you see the market kind of picking up here. Now, when we're talking about July, July's of course already happened, so it's easy to have 2020 vision here, but now we're in a situation where, um, let's say we're looking at bookings made for October. 
So you can see here currently pacing definitely behind where it's been historically. So something to be aware of, hey, if you're dropping rates now from where your rates were in October because pacing's behind, make sure you're keeping an eye for that recovery trend so you can be nimble and really adjust your prices as you see those bookings pick up here. So really updating your rates frequently as you get more data coming in, that is pretty paramount to kind of pricing in the new age when things are so uncertain here. Now, the next trend I quickly wanted to touch up on is just the importance of length of stay restrictions in your pricing strategy. So revenue management, definitely handles both length of stay and pricing. It's not really a one-sided game here. And what you'll notice here, we're looking at bookings made for July again, but on the Y axis, we have the average booking length. So the average length of stay based off of when people are booking. You'll notice when people are booking months and months in advance, their average length of stay is quite a bit longer than that last minute length of stay. Purely because um, if you're booking a longer vacation, you know, a lot more logistics going into place, a lot more people need to be taking time off, a lot more coordination. So something to keep in mind here is that if people are booking far in advance, you definitely want to make your listings available to them for longer stays. And then as you get closer to the booking date, make sure you're reducing those minimum stay restrictions. Since if you kept, let's say, a two week restriction, um, up until May or so, you'd be exposing yourself to a lot less of the market. Whereas if you had a two night minimum stay way back in October, someone might book some dates um, in your high season for two nights that otherwise could have been booked for two weeks. So definitely um, good to stay flexible there, be adjusting those pricing strategies and those minimum stay strategies as you go. Now, what we saw during COVID um, especially with these reactions, is that hosts who reacted early were definitely the big winners. So we have a lot of users on Price Labs who were able to maintain those 80, 90% occupancies during COVID just by reacting early to the trends that we were seeing. So for example, back in February, when there was a lot of uncertainty with travel, people who decreased their last minute length of stays were able to capture all those people who were maybe stranded, needed one or two nights here and there. Um, to really, you know, push some bookings and fill up those calendars. Then when demand dropped in March, for example, the hosts who were on the forefront of dropping their rates quickly, you know, maybe ahead of what other hosts were doing, they really captured the largest portion of that demand. Of course, they were taking that lower price, but then everyone in the following weeks followed suit would start dropping rates. But then, of course, you're competing against the entire market instead of being one of those early movers here. Then in April, when we had that whole trend of longer stays getting booked, hosts who would optimize their policies for midterm bookings, so offering bigger discounts for week-long and month-long stays, they were able to fill in those calendars quickly before you know everyone followed suit and tried to tackle midterm bookings. And then there just wasn't enough demand to fill in the entire market. So really reacting early and kind of reacting quickly is what will keep you ahead of these trends and able to capitalize off of them versus if you're just following what everyone else is doing, by the time you get there, most of the demand has dried up in kind of the current booking situation we're seeing here. So the problem, of course, on the host side is that reacting early is just extremely time consuming. So first off, you need access to both your internal data and access to that local data to see what the trends actually are. You have to be constantly monitoring these trends. Then when you find a major shift, you have to go in and adjust all of your rates based off of these trends. Let's say there's major shifts every week, every two weeks. That's just a lot of time consuming adjustment on your end. So basically to automate your rates, sorry, to price effectively, you need to have both that human aspect that knows when to make these adjustments and then both that automation to actually effectively make these adjustments. So if you purely know what's going on, that's not good enough since you actually have to be in there making these adjustments, which can honestly eat up a full day, <laughs> several days out of your schedule. I know a lot of you are managing quite a few listings and just that manual aspect of managing rates is what makes it so difficult to stay nimble here. So our solution to the process, um, essentially five steps here. So we start by collecting and cleaning all of that market data for you just to make it a lot easier to analyze what's happening in the market. 
then we'll take that data and extract all these trends that we can then apply to your pricing to make sure that your prices are automatically updating to match the market conditions and really changing your strategies to make your pricing effective for you know the current state of the market here after that we of course let you implement any rule-based strategies so this is where things like occupancy based adjustments so adjusting rates on your internal occupancy setting different seasonal minimum prices to make sure your rates don't go too low and automatically updating those minimum stays dynamically that's where you have full control over the actual strategy behind your pricing we purely handle automating that strategy so you're the brains behind it and we're just that muscle uh, working on that manual implementation here then of course uh, the ability to make adjustments in bulk so if there's ever any major shocks to your market the ability to say hey take all of my listings and bump them up or bump them down x percentage instead of going listing by listing and making these changes manually then most importantly just a seamless integration with track where once a day or multiple times a day, however you want to structure it, we would go into track, sync all of your updated rates over so that everything can then get distributed over to the OTAs. So I wanted to do talk about a quick case study that we have with one of our mutual users, uh, Summit Cove, based out of Keystone, Colorado. So for them, the benefit of Price Labs was that they're able to focus on that big picture of what they want their pricing strategy to be and focus less of their time on actually manually changing individual rates for individual listings for all individual nights. So here you can really make the focus of your revenue management team. Hey, what's the strategy? What's happening in the markets? How do we react? Instead of spending so much time on those manual adjustments, which they had been doing for decades. And their response was essentially capturing a lot more reservations when demand is low and then getting higher rates when demand is high. So automatically adjusting what the market's doing there. And of course they were praising our customer service team, which I can attest to great folks on the customer service team, which, which we'll go into a little more detail in just a minute here. Um, other kind of mutual customers we have that we thought we'd highlight real quick. Um, just to show you a few names of who's using both track and price labs in the uh, yeah, on the webinar here today. So jumping real quick into how dynamic pricing actually works. Uh, essentially, we'd start by connecting directly to your track account, which would feed us some information on where you've been priced historically and what your historic occupancies have been for all of your listings. Based off of that data, we would essentially estimate a base price for you, which is an average daily rate. So kind of that price level for where your listing should be priced uh, averaged out throughout the entire year. So the reason we do it on your data is purely because we don't know if you're necessarily managing a luxury penthouse that has gold finishes or if you know in the same location your listing might be a one bedroom unrenovated apartment on the base floor so we're really trying to see where you've been priced historically and then we can start automating rates based off of that here onto that kind of base price we start applying our market trends so things like seasonality where your high season is where your low season is you can of course adjust these with all of our levers within price labs uh, some day of week adjustments, so identifying those peaks for weekends, how much higher than the weekdays they should be. Uh, some lead time adjustments, so last minute discounts, far out premiums. Again, you have full control over this. And then finally, we'll implement some of our neighborhood demand data to determine which dates in your hyper specific neighborhood are seeing the most demand so we can optimize rates for those dates. Uh, essentially generating a pricing calendar for you here where every date is associated with a price that reflects the current condition. So it's reflecting what are the historic trends for pricing here and then what dates are actually seeing that higher demand where we can charge more or lower demand where we should drop rates a little bit. Now that's the first kind of side of price labs here. The second side is kind of that user input. So we'd of course handle that first automation, but then the second side would be giving you as much data as possible so you yourself can optimize your reservation policies here. So we give you multiple dashboards that kind of show off what's happening in the market, how prices are changing by neighborhood, what your lead time is, how length of stay changes by lead time, different trends in cleaning fees, weekly monthly discounts. So we give you all of that and then we give you extra levers that you can use to adjust your rates based off of that data. So things like last minute prices, 
uh, day of week adjustments, occupancy based adjustments based off of your own internal occupancy. So just trying to make that as smooth as possible here. Then of course, the ability to automate your minimum stay strategy based off of that data that you see for when people are booking. So for example, if you typically have a minimum stay of three days during your weekdays, four nights on weekends, you could say, hey, the data is showing that last minute people are mostly booking two night stays. So you could automatically have price labs go in, adjust your price, uh, your minimum stays for your last minute bookings, and then also adjust your minimum stays for your far out bookings, essentially. So looking at what the data is telling you for your market and then really optimizing your minimum stays for that data here. So you're always targeting the segment that's booking at the time. Then, of course, different tools like automatic gap fillers just to automate some of those processes that might currently be manual here. So how it works, uh, you would essentially set all of your rules, set all of your pricing, make all of your pricing and minimum stay adjustments within price labs. We would then connect to track and on a daily basis, we would send them refreshed rates that take into account all of the newest market data, take into account any adjustments that you've made, and then track would be responsible for sending these rates over to uh, your direct booking site and all of the other OTAs that you might be listed on. And Matt's going to go over how that process works and all of that in just a second here. Um, but really quick, I wanted to touch up on our pricing structure. So we do charge a flat fee for all of our listings with no commission. Our idea is that you're using price labs to automate your pricing process. So we definitely don't want to take a portion or take credit for getting you these listings here. Uh, we do start you off with a 30 day free trial just so you can make sure that, hey, I'm getting the results I want through price labs. We definitely help you with a lot of the setup, a lot of the onboarding here. And then going forward, everything is purely month to month. So there's no contract to sign that locks you in. <laughs> we basically believe in our products. So we say, hey, use price labs as long as suits for you for however many listings. We'll only charge you for the listings that are sinking. And then, yeah, you're free to kind of stop and start as you choose. And of course, you pay at the end of the month, not at the start. So you're really paying us with those additional profits and not paying us upfront for anything here. Then just to touch on our support, we offer 24 five customer support. So someone's always there for you during the weekdays, response times under four hours. And if you do want to read more about what other customers are saying, I'd refer you over to our Captera page where you can just see a lot of info from property managers. So before turning it over to Matt, I really quickly just wanted to give you a brief overview of what adjusting rates within Price Labs looks like. So uh, this is kind of the main dashboard where you would see all of your properties, which you can filter by uh, group, uh, by tag, lots of different filters here just to make things more manageable. But for all of your properties, we give you a quick overview of vacancy metrics for the next X number of days. So this is just a quick way of seeing the overall performance of each property. So you might uh, be able to see, hey, which property needs some adjustment here. So within review prices, uh, this is where you can make adjustments to individual listings here. So view that pricing calendar, make any overrides to any specific dates, whether you want to set your own fixed rates, minimum stays, minimum prices. Uh, you can then on the listing level adjust a lot of the trends that are being applied to your rates. So things like, of course, last minute prices, all of your minimum stay restrictions, any occupancy based adjustments that can either be set listing by listing or for a lot of you who are larger property managers, we let you set that on the group level as well. So for example, uh, if you're managing one set of listings that's more kind of condos or a resort of properties, those booking trends are going to be a lot different than your villas and cabins that you might be managing. So here you could basically set a different set of rules for your villas versus your resorts. And then that would essentially update the rules and strategies associated with all listings in that group. So you're really only setting things once and that's applying to all of your listings in bulk. Same goes for any date adjustments. Those can be done on the group level as well, just to make that pricing process quite a bit easier. And then for your day to day, when you are reviewing prices and making sure everything checks out, we do have a multi-calendar here so you can really 
go into the nitty gritty, look at things listing by listing, but make sure that that's all displaying on one page just to make things a lot easier to analyze here. So here you'd see all of our pricing recommendations for all properties, be able to make adjustments nimbly. Uh, and then of course, all of these changes would sync over to track. So in a nutshell, that is kind of what the pricing process within Price Labs looks like. And then if anyone is interested, of course, we can hop into more detail since that was the quickest overview possible of the uh, system here. So always happy to hop on uh, individual calls here going forward. So now we'll send it over to Matt, um, who will take over the screen share and talk more about kind of automation on the track side of things. All right, very good. Thank you, Oliver. Let me share my screen. Uh, I am Matt Rabb on Product Manager TravelNet Solutions. Um, Product Manager on the track line. Uh, it's our property management software. Uh, just to give you some background on who I am and, and what my experience is. I've been with TravelNet Solutions for about a year and a half now. Before that, I was with a property management company out of Panama City Beach, uh, 30A and Destin called Sterling Resorts. We managed uh, about 750 units. I got a lot of experience there doing online marketing. I was their e-commerce director. I was their marketing director, uh, rate, <laughs> rate manager, uh, virtually every, every aspect of the business, which I'm sure a lot of you are filling that same sort of role. So in that, I got a lot of experience with this type of, um, with, with uh, rates and, and also how they apply to the different channels because I also manage different channels. Uh, so first thing I want to take you into is how does track uh, pair up with price labs? Um, one of the key things that we offer is derived rates. Now you might it might be a new term to you because we are one of the first companies to come out with derived rates versus rate adjustments. Uh, what many of you might be familiar with is rate adjustments. So you have your rate table for a unit. So you have your nightly rates uh, that that apply to the unit, and you can apply adjustments. Say go up 10%, and then you want to deliver that to a channel. Well, if you're doing a rate adjustment, your rate table is still the original rate table, and then you're applying an adjustment on top of that. Usually it comes through in the quoting API, so um, different channels use that information in different ways. So you could have potentially different prices shown in different stages. They might store your rate tables uh, for one stage of the search and then apply a rate adjustment during the quoting process. It, it delivers a broken experience to the guest, a confusing experience to the guest. Uh, what we have are derived rates. And what this is, is you can apply adjustments on a parent rate table that makes a new rate table for that unit. And you can apply that to any channel you want. You can make as many as you want uh, for different channels. Um, that pairs perfectly with Price Labs because as you're doing your adjustments in Price Labs, you don't have to consider, well, I want to account for uh, the fees with HomeAway, so I'm going to bump it up by 5% uh, to uh, um, have the guest take care of those fees in the rate. You, can, it, you don't have to make those adjustments. You just make your derived rate with a 5% increase and make that rate table apply to HomeAway. And I'll show you in just a second. Um, in fact, I will go ahead and pull on my screen here. Okay, so in this, you have your drive rate that you're setting up. Uh, let's say we're making one for Airbnb. You can select what channels you want it to apply to. So let's say I was doing this one for Airbnb. And then you select your parent rate. Uh, your parent rate is the one that's being adjusted by Price Labs. So most of the time, rack rate. So we're, we're adjusting on top of our rack rate for all of our units for Airbnb. Now, there's a number of uh, data points that you can update with this. You can do your rate which is the most obvious one. You could do a percentage or a flat rate. So flat would be your replacing with a value. Uh, percent would be your increasing. So let's say we're increasing by 10%. Uh, but then you can also make some adjustments on your length of stay, max length of stay. Let's say you don't take any snowbird stays over Airbnb. You just don't want to do it. You've ran into problems in the past. Uh, sometimes uh, um, those types of guests are better handled direct through direct bookings. You fill up through direct bookings anyway on the snowbird. So you can max out, you can override your max length of stay through Airbnb. That way, your rate table can still be managed for snowbird stays. However, you block it essentially for Airbnb. And same thing with minimum length override. Uh, you can say, okay, 
I want to utilize the home away channel for seven night stays. It works great in the 30 day area for getting that Saturday to Saturday stay. Anything shorter, I really want to have tight control over that. I'm going to go direct and then that's where I'm going to uh, get all my short term bookings. Um, so you can set different minimum length of stays to override. Additionally, you can override your uh, day, uh, days of arrival. So again, Saturday, Saturday, if you don't have that normally set up on that rate type, you can on your derived rate. So you don't have to manage that manually. If you know how you want your channel pricing and your, and your distribution strategy set up, you can do it through a derived rate. And, and that is what pairs so perfectly because you're doing most of your strategy starting at price labs and then most people have a set strategy for each of the channels. You can set that up with your drive rates and it kind of just automates itself out from there, making your life a heck of a lot easier and also controlling those bookings that are coming in so you're not making owners mad with what they see coming in from different channels depending on their, on their commission rates and things like that. Now, on top of that, we also have the ability, and let me go back to my slide. Uh, we also have the ability to uh, target different aspects of your um, reservation to each of the channels. So for example, when you're setting up a channel, you can set up a reservation type for that channel. So I'm gonna create a reservation type for Airbnb. Once you have a reservation type, you can have reservation fees uh, that are designated by unit for a specific channel. So let's say you wanted to have a reservation fee that is for Airbnb only. Um, you can set up a, an Airbnb targeted one. So on the res type of normal guest, which would be your internal bookings, you wouldn't have any value there, so it wouldn't apply that fee. And then you can have a percentage or a flat-based fee that applies only to Airbnb reservations. That will also get paired up with the information from your derived rate that's getting sent out to Airbnb. Uh, booking fees. Booking fees are fees that are not to the guests. They come off of your gross rent. Um, so you can set up booking fees that are per channel as well. So let's say, uh, this is pretty common um, a way to say this is that you're splitting the cost of the channel uh, with the owner. You don't wanna increase your rates. So let's say you're, you're on your derived rates, you're only, you're only modifying your length of stay because you wanna target a certain length of stay. However, you don't wanna disadvantage yourself by making the guests eat the cost or, or they're very savvy in this particular channel comparing against your website and you've had some guess that recognize the pricing difference between one channel and the other. You can, if you're deciding to split that cost based on your uh, um, commission rate with the owner, a great way to do this is to come off of gross. It won't show up on the owner statement because it's coming off gross rent before the uh, commission is taken out and before the money is moved over to be paid out in the owner statement. So you can set up a booking fee, and again, you can target specific channels with the booking fee. And lastly, uh, if you wanted to handle it uh, through travel agent setup, you can also assign a travel agent to automatically apply to any channel. So if I set up a travel agent of Airbnb, I can do a very similar thing to what I was just talking about with a booking fee. I can have uh, either the percentage that the uh, travel, uh, you set up a percentage of travel agent, so you say 10%, and you can have that apply to gross, which is very similar to how a booking fee applies. Um, you can have it come off net entirely on the owner, and it will come off as an owner charge and will be visible on their owner statement. Net split, where the owner is responsible for, let's say your commission rate is 20%, they'd be responsible for 80% of the, of the cost of that travel agent, and that would also appear on the owner statement. And then net PM, which means it comes out of yours, which is probably the least popular <laughs> of the uh, of the strategies. Uh, but you can do that if it is a channel that you are going to eat the entire cost of. You can come in off, come off net. The owner still sees the full amount of rent that was that it was booked for, and it just comes. And there's nothing on the owner statement. It comes out of your your payout. So that's. That's how you can utilize track to really uh, layer upon what Price Labs is delivering in terms of automation and strategy and feed that out to all your different distribution channels, including your own website, including your internal. You can control all that very closely. Uh, some of the connections that we have, Airbnb, VRBO, uh, Flipkey TripAdvisor, once they get their feedback underneath them, um, and uh, recently added is Intopia as well. 
And now I'm gonna take you into bringing this full circle and how uh, automation can be used in track to simplify your life all around. We have what are called triggers and automations. Uh, first thing I like to get across to everybody is what is the difference between a trigger and automation? A trigger is an action that happens and you want a, an automation to fire as soon as that happens. So um, uh, upon checkout, uh, you, want, you want this event, to, you want this action to happen. Uh, automation is when you want it to have something happen in relation to an event that is going to happen. So let's say you say 48 hours prior to the check-in time, we will run a job every hour. And when we find a reservation that is 48 hours prior to check-in time, we will run that automation and whatever action you had chosen for that will then apply. So first thing to understand when you're, when you're looking at this is uh, what does it mean to have an object of an automation? And this is a very important concept to understand uh, because this is where it really gets the wheels turning in your mind of like, what can I do with this? Because there's just so many things you can do with this. Um, so your object is uh, where you have an action that is an event that is happening that you are going to base your automation on. So where your event is going to occur, is it gonna to occur to a contact? Is it gonna to occur to a lead, a sale, a reservation, a housekeeping work order, a maintenance work order, a survey response, or a task? So we already kind of mentioned a few reservations. Those are the easiest to conceptualize, but some of the communication things, uh, for example, a maintenance work order, um, maybe you wanna target maintenance work orders that while well, the guest is in house and you want to send out a text message to uh, the guest staying to let them know that the maintenance work order is complete. Uh, you can set up um, a trigger so when the maintenance work order gets complete, then you can send out a message saying, hey, guess your AC is fixed. Uh, sorry about the inconvenience. Um, so understanding the object really broadens the field on what you can do um, and where you start envisioning these daily tasks so when, when, when I start to think about what I can do with automations, I like to think about each of these objects. Okay, well, I'm gonna concentrate on thinking about a contact. What is my staff doing right now? What am I asking them to do every time a contact does this? And if, if I can come up with some of those things, then I can decide how am I, how am I gonna automate that? I'm gonna take it off their hands. I'll have 100% reliability that it gets done because I'm not worrying about humans. And then I'll be saving them time and they can focus on guests. Um, so when you start breaking it down like that, it really opens up uh, the possibilities of how to streamline your business and make it more reliable. So then we have what is called an action. Now an action, and bring us back to this screen. Okay, so if we are creating an automation, actually I'm gonna to go to a trigger first. Uh, actions are a little easier to conceptualize when you're on a trigger. So you're picking your object. Uh, as we mentioned, triggers happen uh, when an event happens. So here you have to pick, pick an event that, that is going to happen. So you can do reservation created. Uh, you can do uh, changed pets. Um, you can, when, an, when a special request. The thing to keep in mind is this is not just for guest communications. You can use this for internal communications too. So let's say you want to target um, reservations that are within uh, same day arrival and you wanna send a message whenever a special request is added to the housekeeping supervisor. You could do that by having a trigger. So you know, the event happens, someone added a special request, housekeeping supervisor is made aware of it or front desk supervisor, whoever you want to be aware of that special request. Now they're, now they're in the know and you don't have to rely on staff to reach out to them and tell them and maybe forget and the special request goes, uh, it gets done too late or not at all and the guest is unhappy. On the side of automations, you don't have an event uh, that is as apparent. The event is essentially a, a condition. So you have time-based conditions. So these are events, you know, check-in time, uh, check-out time, created, uh, canceled. Again, this is on uh, reservation. These things will be different depending on what object you're picking because obviously it doesn't makes sense. So like if I switch over to housekeeping, we have uh, created data that work order, scheduled data to work order, hours before, hours after. Uh, that's how you automate what you want to happen. So when you start picking these things, you can say is greater than, less than, is, and put a number of hours before the schedule date. Uh, the 
the automation side of it is a lot more forethought of like, okay, this is, this has to happen in a certain time because it is not relevant right when it happens or it might fire in the middle of the night. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe we use automated pricing. So all payments are going to happen in the middle of the night. I don't want to set up a trigger on the payment happening uh, in the middle of the night to send out a message. So you can set this up with automations. The, let me go back to this slide. Ah, yes. And then lastly, uh, it's important to understand conditions and also merge fields. So we kind of got a preview into conditions, but they are so much more than just on the on the uh, automation side. Uh, they, they exist on both the trigger side and the automation side. And what the purpose of a condition is, is to narrow down who you are targeting based on your object. So you can say, uh, I'm, I'm on a reservation, of course, and that's one of our most popular ones to use. So you can either handpick some units that, let's say I have a couple of units that have, um, let's say hot tubs, and I wanna have special uh, instructions that go out to them if they have a hot tub. You can pick, hand pick those units. If they are in a node, uh, you can pick the node. A node is basically your tree structure of where your units are located. Most people set them up in like, uh, let's say it, in my past, and it would have been 30A, Destin, Panama City Beach, and then probably uh, East and West and Central Panama City Beach, and you keep drilling down in that node even to the complex level. So if I want to, you know, send a message to everyone uh, in Calypso about the parking passes and how to get those from the HOA, I could do that. And I could do it a certain amount of time before the arrival, or I can do it on an event that occurs. Um, some other really interesting ones is, especially for internal, is you can do things on travel insurance. So you know that travel insurance, some people have travel insurance automated uh, to go over, some people manually control that. Um, so it could be a notification to an internal staff. Uh, campaigns, um, if you are really interested in a certain booking campaign that you're running, you can have notifications go out to the marketing department. Um, and you can also um, create different actions off of these. And I'll take you through the actions here. So for example, you can send an email. These are really easy to understand. I'm gonna notify somebody. I'm gonna send an email. Uh, there's email templates you can set up. Uh, so that way you just easily pick a template. Um, you can send a document, an e-sign document. Those are reservation documents. Um, the templates are set up in the CRM where documents are set up on the PMS side. Documents are meant to be only related to reservations where uh, templates can be related to all different types of objects. Uh, you can send a text message, uh, but then you can really get creative and you can send surveys based on, on uh, different aspects of the reservation. So, Imagine that you want to send a specific type of survey that only goes out to people that booked through the reservation type of HomeAway. You can condition it down to only target HomeAway people, and then you can send them a very specific survey about that, and you can time that survey to go out, and I'll get into that later because there's chains that you can do in terms of automations that really bring this full circle and and how this will impact your your performance with your guests and and ease up your daily workflow. You can create work orders. So um, let's say you want to look at units that were vacant for a certain amount of time. Uh, so let's say I want to um, day before check-in, if the unit has been vacant for 30 days, I wanna set up a housekeeping inspection to go into that unit and make sure that you know it's still tidy. Nothing happened that we were unaware of. You're not walking, the guest is not walking into a belly up cockroach on the floor, which if you ever worked in the panhandle, that is a very real thing that happens even in the nicest of homes um, and, and really gets you a bad review too. So those types of things you want to avoid and you can use these automations to avoid them. Um, you can also create tasks and tasks are, are incredible tools for keeping track of things you wanna have done within your company. You can create tasks off of just about everything happening. And you can create multiple actions. So if I was creating a task, I was gonna make it a high priority for uh, an assignee to do. And I give it a title and I give it a body. Uh, I can create another action. So let's, I can have multiple things happen off of one uh, automation. Uh, I don't have to go back and create multiple automations to have all these different things that I know should be happening. 
anytime this event occurs. So that is, oh, and uh, of course, merge fields as well. So um, when you're tying to an object, and this brings it back to the understanding of what an object is, there's different merge fields that are related to the object. So when you're looking at the object of a reservation, you can look at the merge fields and obviously any reservation information because that is your object, but what's related to a reservation? Uh, you're gonna you're gonna have an agent, you're gonna have an owner of the of the of the condo or home that a reservation is in. Um, you're going to have a contact or a guest that's staying in their reservation. And you're gonna have a unit that the reservation is and a unit type that that unit resides in and a parent category. Now keep in mind the parent category is only the direct parent uh, of the of the unit. Um, and then a local office that services that. So all those can be used as merge fields. So if you set up a, an automation that covers, um, let's say all the units in, in Calypso Resort, um, when you send these messages out, you can put in merge fields to identify who the guest is to your internal staff. You can identify what unit you're talking about to the guest. Um, you can refer to the office, local office phone number that's servicing the guest when you're talking to the guest. All these things can be set up to automatically fill in as merge fields. So you can set up as few automations as you need to get this job done and still have it as customized and as detailed and as helpful to the guest and or staff that you're trying to notify or assign to this. So the merge fields are incredibly important and the merge fields are always related to the object that, um, that you are, are basing it off of. So once you understand the objects, I'm doing off the object of a lead, you're gonna have uh, different merge fields that are available to you. So here you'll see uh, lead has a contact and it has a lead. Not all reservations are gonna have a lead, so you can't have a merge field of a lead. Uh, campaigns, brands, these are all lead uh, related um, uh, entities, and that's why they're the object of it, or they, the merge fields that are available to it. Okay, so that kind of takes you through the setup of our automation, what is out there. Uh, hopefully that starts your mind just going in a different direction. It's like, oh my goodness, I could take this off so-and-so's plate. They're sending me this every single day, or I keep texting somebody this every time this happens, and I hate it when I miss it because if we miss it, it just gives a terrible experience to the guest. Uh, if you are a, if you're already on track, and you need some assistance with this, of course, our support team is there to help you. Uh, our product team is there to help you. Um, if you're not on track yet, this is another great reason. Uh, I'm hoping you can see this all the way through from Price Labs to track that you can really streamline your business. And I think everybody's mind is in that mode right now with COVID and the financial strains that were put on a lot of us is how can I not have to hire more staff in order to scale my company and grow my company? And a great way to do that is by partnering with a company like Track and Price Labs. So as I was saying, they you can have very simple ones. Uh, so a good example of a simple one is I create the survey. I can have many different types of surveys, and I can use my I can use my conditions to target a survey that I created to a specific type of guest or a guest that stayed in a specific area. Um, you could even have a survey that is for when they are in house. Uh, so let's say you want to um, get them a quick, and, I, and if they are doing an in-house one, I'd suggest it only being a couple questions. No one's going to want to sit down on their vacation they paid a lot of money for and fill out a 50-question uh, survey on day two of their vacation. But if you send even a one-question one, um, to get a parameter of how they are doing, you can say, hey, how's everything going so far? Happy face, frowny face. Uh, and, and they send it back, frowny face, and you know, okay, guest service, get on this, reach out to them. So you can create a survey, you can target certain types of reservations for that to go to. Um, and then there would be a second uh, automation involved in sending a survey. So you can send it at the optimal time. Um, so you might create it uh, when a reservation is made and send it at a certain time in their reservation. Um, another way to look at it is you can actually create the survey at that correct time and then have every survey send out instantly. So it just depends on where you want to build out that automation. We have that flexibility on both sides, but it allows you to both target uh, guests and types of reservations and things of that nature, as well as the timing to when we're going to receive this. 
Uh, so that's, that's more of a simple chain that you can see. I'm creating and I'm sending. Uh, more advanced chains that you can create. Um, let's say um, in the last minute before it's arriving, last couple of days before it's arriving, we had to change the unit. You want, there's a lot of people in your company that need to know something when this happens. You're gonna have to have, uh, if you have an owner, owner relations department, you might want to create a task for your owner relations to reach out to your owner because let's say, <laughs> let's say it moved off of them because of a maintenance issue. Uh, that's why you had to move it out of their unit. You definitely wanna be on top of that before they notice in their owner portal that they now have a, uh, a maintenance uh, work order in their owner portal and they also have a missing reservation where they're getting no revenue. So you wanna reach out to them before that happens. So it's great. Let's create a task off that. Uh, it's a change of unit. It might be for a different reason, but at least they're aware and now they have a task like look into this. There's a change of unit. You might need to reach out to this owner, do some damage control. Um, you can create a work order off of it. So you could say, I wanna go check out that, um, the new unit that they're going into. Um, it, it, so you could set up an inspection to go off that new unit. You can send a text to the, to the guest to make sure they know that it did indeed go through because they might be calling from the car. Uh, so they're calling from the car, something has happened or you called them and they're in the car driving down. Um, you want it, it, you will have this targeting last minute. You wanted to send a text out just so they know that yes, indeed, yeah, I talked to somebody on the phone, but I wanna know concrete, did this happen so I don't arrive and they go, I don't know because Julie uh, stopped working four hours ago and she didn't put any notes in the system about you changing units and uh, we don't have a place for you to stay. <laughs> so it's, in, it's, it's a reassurance to the guests. So all these things can be created off of that. And then to further the chain is since work orders are an object, since tasks are an object, you can, when these things are completed, you can let front desk know, you can let management know, it completes that uh, accountability all the way through your process without having to do any extra work. So you don't have to tell your, 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 your home housekeeping inspectors, make sure to call me on these urgent things. When it's getting changed last minute, you're doing an inspection last minute, make sure to call me because I want to make sure everything's perfect uh, each day. That's the type of manager I am. That's the type of uh, uh, experience I want to give my guests. You don't have to rely on a human to do that. You can set up automation so when those things are completed that you get notified for them. So some other cool ones that have been very popular in the past, we've, we've kind of pulled out some of these things, uh, payment reminder. Uh, so 30 days before, you can target anyone that has, let's say, let's say your policy is 30 days prior to arrival, balance always has to be at zero. That's, that's what it is. It balance has to be at zero. So you can, one of the conditions is balance. So you could say like, okay, I'm going to set up a thing 29 days before arrival. Anything with a balance greater than zero, I want to send out a payment reminder um, email. It could be to the guest. It could also be to your internal staff. If you don't want to just do a generic one to the guest in case there's some reason, you can send it to um, it, it, internal staff and you can use role. So we'll target different people depending on their role in, in terms of a unit. Um, just to, not branch too far into more awesome things about our software, but we have a way to set up a role on basically anything you can think of. They're all customizable, but roles on each of the units. So if you have a front desk supervisor that's in charge of XYZ unit and a different one in a different area, when you're setting up these automations, you can target role instead of an individual user. So it goes to the right person that needs to know internally in your company. Uh, another popular one is anniversary birthday message. People love getting those things. It keeps you front of mind when they're going to make their bookings. Um, reservation documents, no brainer. They always have to go out every time. You don't want to rely on a human. Automate them. Automate them. Automate notifications that they haven't signed their contract. Reminders to sign their contract. Um, those things have to get done as part of your process, as part of your well-being, uh, financial well-being of the company, so you don't have disputed transactions let's automate it, let's get it done. And then of course, uh, you can do promotions. So um, you, can, you can promote, I don't know, if you have food or beverage, you can do things for when they're arriving. If you know what the specials are gonna be the week before, you can always have a link to your website um, that has your updating food and beverage specials at a certain place. If food and beverage is only in one of your condo complexes, you can target the people that are staying in that condo complex. So. Like in my old world, uh, Splash Resort, we had food and beverage there that we controlled. We could say, okay, this week, 
you know, so-and-so is working. He makes, he makes a mean margarita. Everyone buys those when he's working. I'm going to run a promotion on that. Um, so I'm going to hit up everybody that's in Splash that's arriving during this time period and uh, let them know that our world famous margaritas are going to be on special during this time frame. Uh, texting is extremely useful. So we call it SMS in the system, same thing. It's it text messages. Um, you know, one of the things that I saw in my past was uh, we used uh, um, glad to have you and they had to go into glad to have you to get that door code. Doesn't always happen, especially with people that aren't as tech savvy or don't want to download an app, things like that. When you're sending things through text, that's something everybody has People are okay with getting these things when it's crucial information. I would not use it for marketing. We are not set up to use it for marketing, so we don't have the opt-in, opt-outs yet. That is coming down a pipeline, but for concrete things that you know they're not gonna object to because this is crucial to their stay, like getting in your door, especially when you're arriving at 11 o'clock at night, that is crucial to your stay. You're not gonna get a complaint that somebody got their lock code to their, to their text message. You don't have to worry, are they, are, do they have a, a bad connection uh, and they can't, get into the guest portal. So we have mo multiple touch points on a lot of these things. Texting is just a way to increase that. So you text it, so they have it in their text. It's, it's saved in there, you sent it X amount of hours before they arrived. We do have a guest portal. They can log into the guest portal if they wanted to, see it there. Um, it will be, in, if you send them some documents, it's just good for these things that are crucial to them having a good stay. Um, that you can get it to them as many ways as possible. And through automation, it is not a burden on you to get it to them in all these ways that are possible. So, and then some other use cases, early check-in, um, you know, letting people know inside of your company, okay, we just sold an early check-in. Um, we need to change our housekeeping order that we're gonna be doing. So let me send out, I, I have a flag. So anytime that a reservation has a trigger that early check-in was added, uh, I am going to have a message go out to my housekeeping supervisor to um, change up the order of how they might be knocking out their cleans and get over to the early check-in first to make sure we have that, have that taken care of. I touched on it before during stay maintenance. One of the main things people want to know is when is it done? You can have a trigger based on the work order getting completed. Um, that way you don't have to wait for maintenance to let the front desk know, front desk to get off the phone and then let them know. Because a lot of times these people are just running down to the beach while they're there. They feel uncomfortable being in there while maintenance is in the room. They say, I I'm gonna go down to the beach for an hour. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys are done. Just let me know when it's done so I can come back up to the room. You don't wanna leave them out at the beach. They start getting frustrated that they might be hungry. They wanna go make lunch for their kids. You want to let them know instantly when that happens. So when the maintenance work order is completed, it sends a text to them. They get that text. They're happy. They, they didn't spend one extra minute avoiding their room that they paid so much money for during their stay. So as you can see, the value internally and externally, good communication, upselling, all these things are possible through automation. So when you're when you're pairing up and you're looking at, at how to improve your business, and like I said before, how to scale your business without having your um, costs go through the roof in terms of employees, um, both your current employees' time, their <laughs> mental well-being, <laughs> your reliability of how you, how you transact these things. Um, it just makes so much sense when you look at a company like Price Labs and a company like Track that have all these things figured out, that have experience in the industry and have been operating in the industry for a long time, that we can take care of a lot of these uh, pain points for you through automation. So you get 100% accuracy, 100% reliability, and decrease in your overall uh, costs. Okay, and I am going to bring back Price Labs into this discussion. Awesome. Fantastic. Go ahead, Oliver. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you, man. Okay. That's honestly a lot more automation than I even thought was possible with Track here. So, yeah, definitely pairing those two together. I mean, you're automating most of your day-to-day -day processes here.